Oshin, where were you this week? Connor, we went to Meinl. We went to the Meinl factory in Germany. Germany. In Germany, so it is, yeah. Fantastic spot. Absolutely beautiful place. Um, just so beautifully put together, so dedicated to the specific wonderful instruments that they create. Yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, we're in Goodenstein, we were just driving past and we saw this building and thought, that looks nice, let's drop in. Uh, just happened to have a couple of symbols in the, the, the building. Like, Yeah, this is Mino. We're in Mino. We're in bleeding Mino, like. Dead excited, so I am. We're going to go and choose the nicest symbols I could possibly find here. That's pretty cool. We proceeded to sit down, have a little chat about the specifics, how mine will kind of do their thing, as it were. We went on a little factory tour. So we got to tour the specific factory where they manufacture all of the, uh, the sort of the MCS, HCS, MB10s, MB20s, etc. And they also take in the, the raw symbols from Turkey, the, the hand-created symbols from Turkey, and they finish them in this minor factory in Germany. At the end of that little factory tour, we went, sat back down, had a little drink, a little cup of coffee, and then we went back into their actual sort of storage unit, their storage facility there, and we started picking symbols. This is just the most wonderful room I've ever been in in my life. Started with hi-hats. Um, hi-hats were always going to be the most time-consuming just for taking them out. There's obviously the pair of them and they're together with the little sort of grommet which holds them together. Uh, so you'd have to take them apart, you'd have to put the bottom one on the stand, take the clutch apart, put the, the clutch uh, together on the actual top I had. And I'd be doing this kind of maybe four or five times per specific symbol to try and achieve the, or to try and choose the specific best of the bunch. Bearing in mind I would have had possibly, there could have been about 30 or so on a rack on one specific skew just to choose from. Yeah, so we picked out eight beautiful sets of hats um, from 14s to 15s to 16s. And uh, that was the end of the first day, as I said, with the hats. It took a little bit longer to, to kind of set them up and decide between them. There's so much variance in the hi-hats. And it's the one symbol which I believe is played the most. Most people will play a hi-hat more than they will a ride symbol or a crash symbol, for instance. So I kind of tried to take as long as possible or as much time as possible just specifically trying to figure out which one I preferred and obviously I had an idea of what I was looking for with each individual set of hats and so on so but yeah it was an absolute delight. Between this 00015M and this 00015M at one point we were lucky enough to have two of them so that that tiny difference can be the difference between someone liking something and someone not liking something. But it doesn't make one better than the other. There is no, there is no better. There is no such thing as better. It's specifically a taste thing. It's just a matter of what you prefer to listen to. I mean, these are things that you're taking home as instruments to satiate something in you. It's like that guitar. The, the guitar you're bringing home specifically because it says something to you. Uh, an instrument to me is something that you should feel an urge to go and pick up and be with. It should give you that. Uh, for me, there's nothing different between these and the guitar, for instance. I got to try as I say, five, six, seven of these individual symbols. And I believe we picked out the best of each, of each of the ones that I tried. Um, it was the most rewarding process, understanding the differences between each, and ind each individual one and finding my ideal symbol as well, finding what I believe is our ideal symbol for you guys, obviously, to come in, try out. and Yeah, really, really re rewarding process. And as I say, I think we've got a really, really beautiful set of symbols to choose from now. 
Uh, people are going to come in and be able to see that these symbols were hand selected by Music Maker. Um, I mean, I did it for them. In effect, we did it for them. We decided that we were going to go and choose symbols we be we believed represented the Milo brand. We were believed represented Music Maker in a sense, and people are going to have the uh, the pleasure of being able to see. Uh, what they sound like. I think it's going to be a, a very rewarding experience for anyone to come in and play these cymbals anyway. So that was anyway, that was the morning after we, after we were done with that we travelled to the logistics centre which is literally just across the road and it's probably the most amazing uh, part of the trip I would say. The, uh, the logistics centre is this incredible warehouse which is fully automated so the staff in effect will work with their computer systems, their database, to choose from this massive, massive uh, selection of stock. They distribute obviously multiple different brand, brands aside from the minor brands and it's all contained in this one massive warehouse. But as I say it's fully automated so they, they have these, uh, these robots in this huge, huge warehouse which is I think at its tallest 26 meters, 18 meters for the slightly smaller items. But they're running down these tracks. These robots are the height of the actual building itself. And everything's on pallets. Um, all the larger items are on pallets, so little bubble. Um, so they'd fly down these tracks and you'd see them stop and obviously the little cart would be running up and down this thing and this shelves stacked the whole way up. There isn't a single sort of empty space or there. Well, obviously there's a couple of empty spaces so they can add to the stock, but um, First in, first out is the principal in there as well, but it's amazing to see it work. So a, an operator will simply type in the specific products that he wants. The robot will know exactly where that is based on the barcode which is attached to the actual uh, pallet itself. It'll fly down this track. It'll obviously, wherever it's positioned horizontally, it'll choose it. It'll pull it out, it'll bring it back to where it loads it onto a little conveyor belt and the conveyor belt will bring it out to the, the individual who is who has entered the uh, the request for this stock? Um, they'll take, as I say, like two or three guitars or a couple of drums or whatever it is that they're choosing. They'll box them at their their little station there. Then they'll be done with it. So the machines, again, the computer will just take it back and kind of find another place for it in the warehouse. It's the most magical system. It's very hypnotic to watch. Um, and there's no lights in the warehouse either. So you've, you'd have to, if you're kind of going to visit, there's a specific sort of set of lights which they'll turn on and obviously they'd need lights to, to maintain the thing. If there's any, anything goes wrong, then they'll head in to, to fix it all. But there's no kind of, there's no one working the stock in the warehouse except for these machines. And the computer system knows where everything is located. So as I say, that was incredible to see. And then following on from that, we went and visited the showroom. Uh, the showroom is also attached to their kind of, I suppose, events hall. So the showroom is this, basically, it's your dream music store, in effect. have drum kits set up with all of these minor symbols. you've got the full range of minor percussion set up there for you to try out, um, various other lines that they distribute from their, from their uh, logistics centre over there. It's so beautifully presented, just really clean, really kind of ergonomically designed, it's all very natural the manner in which it flows. They have a little room in there as well with a few drum kits set up with symbols and so on so that the staff can come down and cut loose should they wish. They have this huge event hall, which you'd know the Minel Festival, the, the, the Minel Festival is held every year. They actually hold it there in Gettenstetten, or Guttenstetten. They hold it there in Guttenstetten. So, uh, yeah, incredible place, absolutely mind-blowing. 
I'm very, very much hoping that everyone enjoys the symbols that we picked for them. Uh, I think they're exemplary, I think they're perfect, I think they're wonderful. I'd like to think that others will too.